hello students today in this video we are going to start chapter number 2 that is units and measurements but before studying that we should know the need of measurements in physics means we are studying physics here then we should know uh, why we are studying measurements in this branch physics okay so the first thing that we are going to study the need for measurements as we are studying physics and we know that physics is an exact science right so physics actually the two important facts about physics is that first it is an exact science and the next one is physics is the science or the branch of science that deals with the nature and the natural phenomena okay physics is that branch of science that deals with nature and natural phenomena if we combine both these factors right if we combine both these factors then we get that physics is an exact science which gives us an accurate knowledge about the nature and the natural phenomena right what is physics physics is an exact science which gives us an exact or accurate knowledge about the nature and the natural phenomena and this knowledge or these natural phenomena by using physics we express these natural phenomena in terms of some relationships having a certain quantities involved in it okay and the accuracy of these relationships depends on the measurements we make so physics is an exact science that deals with the nature and natural phenomena or we can say that by using physics we explain these natural phenomena in terms of some quantities or in terms of some relationships having certain quantities and the accuracy of these relationships or the exactness of the values of these quantities depends upon the measurements we make and ultimately the measurements that we are making it its accuracy depends on the instruments that we are using while measuring techniques okay while measuring those values what instruments we are using what techniques we are using all the accuracy depends on the accuracy of those instruments so basically physics is an exact science that gives us exact knowledge or accurate knowledge about nature and natural phenomena where we explain these in terms of in terms of certain relationships having some quantities or we say them physical quantities now the exactness of these relationships the exactness of these relationships depends on the exactness of or accuracy of physical quantities involved in the relationship and ultimately it depends on the exactness of the measurements so physical quantity kitna accurate hai it depends on the accuracy of measurements that we are making right and our measurements are how much accurate this depends on the accuracy of 
accuracy of measuring instruments or techniques the techniques or the instruments what we are using it depends on that techniques so that's why we need measurement to exactly explain the nature and natural phenomena occurring there okay so here come a new term called physical quantities we are going to study that next what are physical quantities let's see as i explained that in physics we explain nature or natural phenomena in terms of certain relationships containing some physical quantities so we can define physical quantity as the quantities in terms of which the laws of physics can be expressed right so physical quantities are those quantities in terms of which laws of nature or laws of physics can be expressed are called physical quantities and one more thing is there these physical quantities can be measured directly or indirectly okay so the physical quantities either can be directly measured or indirectly measured so we can sum up physical quantities as all those quantities which can be measured directly or indirectly and in terms of which the laws of physics can be expressed are called physical quantities now examples for physical quantities are there are very there are various examples uh, but few of them are length mass speed force etc okay so all these quantities are involved somewhere in certain uh, natural laws or physical laws so all these quantities are called physical quantities now these physical quantities are broadly divided into two categories or two types namely fundamental quantities and derived quantities okay so all these physical quantities are divided into two types that is fundamental and derived quantities let's see what are these as i said physical quantities are divided into two types that is fundamental quantities and derived quantities so first is fundamental quantities these are those physical quantities which can be treated as independent of other physical quantities means they don't depend on other physical quantities and these are not defined in terms of other physical quantities okay so fundamental quantities are those which are independent of other physical quantities and are not usually defined in terms of other physical quantities we can write it as these are those physical quantities those physical quantities which can be treated as independent of other physical quantities and are not usually defined in terms of other physical quantities okay so this is called fundamental quantity moving to the derived quantities so derived quantities are those physical quantities whose defining operations are actually based on other physical quantities these are called derived ones so derived ones are those physical quantities whose defining operation
is based on other physical quantities the difference is that these fundamental quantities we will measure these fundamental quantities directly while in case of derived quantities we have certain formula for that in terms of other physical quantities for fundamental quantities there is no formula we measure them directly they don't depend on other physical quantities while in case of derived quantities these derived quantities depends on other physical quantities and there is some formula or operation by which we can calculate them by using other physical quantities so this is the difference between fundamental quantities and derived quantities after these physical quantities there comes an another term called unit we have we have the chapter named units and measurements so again unit is divided into two categories that is fundamental units and derived units okay let's see what it is before talking about physical unit i want to discuss about measuring process so the measurement of a physical quantities is actually a process of comparing that quantity with a standard amount of physical quantity of the same kind okay and that is called its unit so measurement is a process of measuring a physical quantities in which we compare that particular quantity with a standard amount of the same physical quantity and that is called its unit okay so physical unit is what the standard amount of physical quantity chosen to measure the physical quantity of the same kind is called a physical unit and the process of this comparison is called the measuring process for example to express the measurement of a physical quantity we need to know two things first is its numerical value and the second is its unit so the unit is the quantity in the unit is in which the quantity is measured and numerical value is actually the magnitude of the quantity so if we talk about measuring process to understand unit we first have to understand measuring process so me measuring process of any quantity is the thing in which we compare a standard the given amount of the given amount of the physical quantity to a standard amount of the physical quantity of same kind for example so suppose i have a box having 1 2 3 4 5 objects okay i have a box containing 5 objects now i ask you i have 20 objects i have 20 objects then you will say that yes we have 20 objects so we can make four such sets like we can make four such sets so four is the magnitude and sets is sets is the unit means unit is the standard amount that we are considering for our measurement and four or the that is the quantity that we get during the measurement so there are two things that we should have in our mind while measuring that is the unit first is unit and the second thing is numerical value unit is what unit is the standard amount of the physical quantity unit is the standard amount of physical quantity chosen to measure the physical quantity of same kind okay we chose that unit to measure that physical quantity of same kind suppose i am talking about length and i chose the unit meter so if i travel 10 meters then it means 10 is the magnitude or the numerical value and meter is the unit and 1 meter is the standard amount in terms of which i am measuring that length so numerical value is the magnitude of that quantity magnitude of the quantity that we get while measuring it this is the unit and the numerical value and physical unit is the standard amount of a physical quantity 
that is chosen to measure the physical quantity of same kind and is called physical unit. But there are certain desirable characteristics to choose that standard amount, that physical unit. हम क्या standard amount लेंगे और क्या unit हमें consider करना है उसके लिए there are certain desirable characteristics. So we should consider that while choosing the unit what we are going to consider. So the required desirable characteristics of a physical unit are that physical unit must be well defined okay so that we can explain the things more accurately it should be of convenient size neither too small nor too large it should be of convenient size means the distance or the quantity that we are going to measure according to that it should work it should not change with time it should not vary with time it should be easily accessible it should be internationally acceptable and it should not be affected by the change in physical conditions physical conditions like pressure temperature etc so if we are changing any physical condition then that unit cannot be affected by the change in the physical conditions and it should be internationally acceptable that i have already said it should be indestructible means we should not destruct it into sub parts or we should not make its sub parts and it should be reproducible means we can get it easily okay so the desirable characteristics of a physical unit are it should be well defined of convenient size it should not change with time it should be easily accessible internationally acceptable destruct indestructible reproducible as well as it should not be affected by the change in physical conditions for example temperature and pressure so if we have a unit like this we can consider it as a physical unit these are the characteristics for a desirable physical unit now these units are divided into two sub categories or types these are again fundamental units and derived units fundamental units and derived units let's talk about this one by one so fundamental units are those units which can neither be derived from one another nor they can be further resolved into more simpler unit means fundamental unit wo units hai jinko hum baki units se nahi derive kar sakte aur hum unko zyada simple form mein ya aur solve nahi kar sakte they cannot be resolved into more simpler form so two points we have to remember here fundamental units are those units which cannot be derived cannot be derived from other units and the second thing is these cannot be further resolved into simpler form cannot be resolved into simpler form okay fundamental units are those units which cannot be derived from other units and these are those which cannot be resolved into more simpler form then such units are called fundamental units while in case of derived units this is totally different derived units are those physical units which can be expressed in terms of fundamental units so derived units are those which we can get or derive from other fundamental units okay derived units are those which can be expressed in terms of fundamental units such units are called derived units now the next thing is that to measure physical quantities or for measuring process we need a complete set of units which is used to measure all kinds of fundamental and derived quantities now that set that whole set is called a system of unit so the next thing that we are going to study is system of units so the system of units is actually a complete set of units which is used to measure all kinds of fundamental and derived quantities right so by using a system of unit we can uh, that system of unit contain all the all the units that are possible 
to measure all kind of fundamental as well as derived quantities the commonly used systems of units are as follows the systems that we use more are cgs system okay fps system next is mks system and si system the four systems that we use a lot in our calculations are CGS system, FPS system, MK system and SI system. CGS system is based on the units centimeter, grams and second. Okay. So, in CGS system our base units are centimeter, gram and seconds. In FPS system the based units are foot for length, pound for mass and for time it is again second foot pound and second are the base units for fps system for mks system the base units are meter kilogram and for time it is again second and now si system is the international system of units it is internationally acceptable and it contains seven basic units and two supplementary units so in our next lecture uh, i write it here that si system is the internationally acceptable system and it contains seven basic units and two supplementary units or quantities seven basic and two supplementary quantities okay so in our next video we will start our lecture from this si system we study that what are the basic si quantities and units and what are supplementary si units till then study hard and stay safe thank you